Hey you guys, welcome back to Beamer Light. I am back you guys with another word. The day is beautiful, it's so sunny. I'm like, I'm gonna go sit outside today again in the car. So if you guys did not watch yesterday's video, I highly encourage you and yeah, I just encourage you to watch it. it. Talks about the decisions we are making and the benefits and also the consequences to our choices in life um, on this walk with God. And so um, before I get into the, today's word, I do want to go ahead and open up in prayer and allow the Holy Spirit to lead as always. So Father God, we thank you for this divine moment we have with you. We thank you for this hour, Lord. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you for being Jehovah Nisi. We thank you, Father God, that you're the Alpha and the Omega. We thank you that you're the beginning and the end. And Lord, I just pray that as I decrease, you increase and that you speak through me, Father God. Let every word that comes out of my mouth be by what I hear from you and know of you, Jesus. I pray that it locates those it needs to locate. May you bless those it needs to touch right now in Jesus' name. So for every person listening and watching, I pray this word is a blessing, a confirmation, and also revelation to them. In Jesus' name we pray. And we seal this prayer in your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, as I woke up this morning, I discerned in my spirit also since last night but more so like today just what is happening within not only the body of christ but just all over like everywhere in the world um and one thing god is wanting us to be very mindful of is to be careful to be warned of the very things the very people that are coming in the name of god but you're seeing different fruit there's so much that I can even unpack here, so much that I could say, um, because there, it's not just like, it's not going to do it justice in one video. And so I think this is just an open discussion to many future videos, topics that I do come on here and share and other people, other leaders, other ministries, other, you know, places where God is really just meeting us at. And I not only am I seeing so much division within the body of Christ, but I'm seeing slander and I'm seeing manipulation. And we know that these are witchcraft spirits. We know that these are demonic and ungodly spirits and ungodly soul ties. Um, and I wanted to share today, tagging into this. And sorry if you guys hear like a little squeaky voice. My niece is just like really loud today. <laughs> um, actually, let me close. I'll just shut the window. Okay, so I just, I want to share this because um, there's been moments in my own life, my own walk, that if I'm not careful, if I'm not prayed up, if I'm not discerning the voice of God, then, you know, the enemy comes to deceive, he comes to manipulate. And that's like one of the key words I want to talk about is manipulation. So if we go into Matthew 7, starting at verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous, ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree or nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. And I want to go ahead and keep reading down um, towards verse 21. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name verse 23 and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me you you who practice lawlessness i think it's so important that within the body of christ that we are walking in accordance to god's will right it's easy to scroll through social media it's easy to go on youtube to watch prophetic videos to watch sermons, to really get intake, right? To have this intake just consuming us. Again, not everything everything we see is bad. God raises people up, but
but it's in the fruits that you're gonna know who's of God. You're gonna know who really loves God, who's like sold out for Christ, who's on fire for Christ. These matters are important because it matters what we consume. It matters, and if you didn't watch yesterday's video, I really recommend you, if you're led, to watch this video, which talks about the kinds of agreements we get ourselves into because anything can become an agreement, right? The friendships we get into, the relationship, the ministry, the leadership. Once you are under some kind of agreement, you're now, your mind is being opened to the possibility and the potential of being fed things that maybe God didn't say, or maybe it's potentially in a place where you're absorbing so much, but you're seeing something else happening in life. And that's where I talk about the, 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 I like to call it the law of sowing and reaping. And it really is just the principle of what you, you know, what you sow, you're going to reap. What you reap is what you sow. And what you consume and what you put out is so important for your walk with Christ. I always say it's so important that we are seeking Christ for ourselves, that we are fasting, we are worshiping, we are getting close to the Father for our own lives instead of hearing the opinions of others. And like I said, I know people around us have great intentions and, and they their hearts may be in a good place whenever they're giving a word or whatever the case may be. But it's really up to us to take whatever we're hearing and bring it back to God. Number one, most important. That's my rule of thumb that if you guys are watching my videos, if you guys are on my page and you guys are watching my life and you're hearing what God is saying and sharing through me, I still encourage you to go back to God because I'm not God. I am just a vessel. You're just a vessel. We are his mouthpieces. We are his hands, his feet, his eyes, his ears. We are the body of Christ. Our job is not to play the role of God. Our only hard posture position is to praise God, praising God through the storms, praising God when we are in rejoicing and celebration, which leads me to sharing another word he gave me today. God shared very clearly with me that when you are stepping into his provision, his plans, which are good, and you're in a season of celebration, that not only is it okay if people don't clap for you, because again, it's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about, you know, the very things God gives you. It's about the act the spirit of God, should I say. It's the spirit of God that is moving you forward. And so when people around you can't perceive that to be God, and they're not seeing it as God doing something and moving forward, that God's in the neighborhood to bless, that God is doing what he said he's going to do because of the fact that there's tension or there's confusion coming from one end. God shared very clearly with me, do not throw your pearls to pigs. The very things that God does within us and over our lives are precious in his sight. And when we are constantly just like giving it away or allowing that blessing to be, you know, messed with or tampered with, then that's where opposition can arise. That's when we're, you know, in a place where we're vulnerable and we're going back to God. And there's, again, we can't stop a lot of things that happen to us, but we can respond in certain ways the way God needs us to. And so I share this because when you're in a season to be blessed, whatever that thing that you pray to God about and God's coming through in his faithfulness because he's God and he knows you're ready. He knows his time. When it's time to celebrate, you have to be mindful of the very things and people around you. I want to go ahead and read, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves, just like we read earlier. They are dressed up in sheep's clothing. And how do we know? You're praising Jeanette, how do I know that there's a wolf in sheep's clothing. How do I know I have an enemy that's a lot closer to me than I than I know and think? You're probably asking, how do I know what is of God or who's of God or what people around me, what their best intentions and what their best heart is and foot, foot is towards me? And again, it's vice versa. It's not just a one-way street, right? Relationships, connections, um, opportunities, they arise in a two-way manner. So if we go into Philippians 4, starting at verse 8, it says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. 
Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. It is important we were walking in the peace of God. So if we're ever in a situation or we're in a place and season in our life where God's truly like showing up, he's moving, which is all the time. But I'm talking about those promises, the blessings of God that we're stepping into. I, I, It's something that I didn't actually want to perceive for a while. But then I said, but I know it's true. Just like God has people on our side and for us, the enemy has his demons. He has agents. And if we're not careful with not like paying attention to the fruit of others, then we can potentially give something to the very thing that is trying to hurt us. And it is so important that we walk with the spirit, the gift of discernment. When you are walking in the gift of discernment, you are walking with the discernment of God. God is giving you spiritual eyes. You're able to hear his voice and it's to take it back to God, it's to go into prayer and to ask God to help you discern what he's trying to show you. Amen. And so when I read here, the very things that are of God are honorable, are pure, are admirable, are um, lovely, is true these things are of god because it represents god and you'll know someone by their fruit if it contradicts they may say they love god they may do it all right but if their intention is to whether they know this or not is to kind of distort the blessing that's when we need to get into prayer. That's when we need to take it to God and ask the Lord to shut doors in our lives that are going to hinder us, that are going to stumble us and to help us put a, a guard on our mouths that we're speaking in the way he wants us to speak and that we're not sharing and saying too much of God's plans. Amen. Sometimes it's good to move in silence, y'all. Like I'm learning this all the time. It's good to move in silence. I Everything that happens to me, I don't have to share because it also gives the enemy a foothold as well. It's not, it's one thing to be silent and wise, right? The Bible says, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. That's exactly how we should walk. Be gentle, be kind, be compassionate, be wise, be discerning, know what is for you. And if you don't know, you take it to God in prayer. God, if this isn't for you, remove it. God, if you know, expose the nature of this thing, because I'm discerning something here. Amen. And God will always lead us in the right direction, right? We're on the straight and narrow path with him. So again, as I, as I woke up this morning, I, I just kept discerning. It's important and it's imperative that we are connecting in the way God wants us to with others, with opportunities. Not everything is from God, right? Not everything we think is a is an opportunity. It's either a God opportunity or it's a worldly opportunity. And you have to know the difference because this goes into every area of our lives, whether it's a career, whether it's a job, everything matters. And it's not to instill fear. It's not to throw out fear, but it's to know whose you are in Christ. Because when you know your identity in Christ, then you're going to walk as a child of God. You're going to be like, wait a second, that's not for me. I don't believe it in, in this thing over here that they're doing and teaching and preaching. And I'm not talking about ministry. It could be a job. It could be a career. It could be a friendship. It could be anything. I, I might have to let this very thing go so that God can show up and do something in my life that is not contradicting him. Amen. I want to go ahead and read in John 16, 21. And again, keep in mind that this word really is about when God is blessing you, celebrate, rejoice, walk in the provisions of God, because that means there's a new season and God is doing something new in your life. Don't let anyone, do not let the enemy distort that in your life or from you. Don't let him take the very pearls within you to trample on them. Don't give the enemy a foothold by stealing your joy. If he can steal your joy, then he's halfway in. 
John 16, 21, a woman when she is in labor has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Praise the Lord. God is clearly showing us and speaking to us today and sharing that when God is doing a beautiful, miraculous thing in your life to move you forward, it is a blessing of God. You are allowed to rejoice. You are allowed to walk in joy. Don't let anyone, just like the scripture tells us here, 22 says, and your joy no one will take from you because it's not theirs to take. So the minute you start letting ravenous wolves storming around in your life and you're speaking too much about the blessing, you're speaking too much about the very things God placed inside of you, that is a foothold for the enemy to come in and to steal and to destroy. And when you are discerning and you're walking in the fruits of the spirit and you're walking in the gift of discernment, discernment and you're walking by the fruits and nature of Jesus, you will then begin to see the fruits of God flowing in your life. And not. And, and I want to share this. When you are being blessed, not everyone is up to receive the benefits of your blessing. They didn't know what it took for you to get there. They didn't know how many times you were praying and crying and, and rejoicing and crying again. They didn't know what it took for you to get to the place you prayed for. So it's important and imperative that you allow the Holy Spirit to move you. You allow the Holy Spirit to protect you, to keep you, and to guard your heart. I feel the presence of God, you guys. God wants to bless his children. There's things he needs to alter. There's things he needs to set in place. Not everybody's going with you to that new thing, that new place, that new season, that marriage, that baby, that house. Not everyone's called to go. Some may be a stumbling block. Some may distort the entire mission. God is saying it's okay to let things go. It's okay for others to walk away. He's just dealing with them. Amen. But when God is in you, when you are in the season of your harvest, do not let anyone steal your joy because that tells me that they're coming not in the love of Christ, but coming in the distortion of the enemy. It's clear and it's plain to see y'all. When God comes to give us life, he gives us life abundantly. A good tree, again, if we go back to Matthew, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Where is this bad fruit coming from? They say they love God, but I'm seeing something else. They're seeing something else. They're showing me something else. Where is the good fruit? Where is the honorable fruit? If we go into Philippians, he says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. If it's not worthy of praise, then we must remove ourselves. Oftentimes we say, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. No, God's waiting on us. He's waiting on us. And he's waiting patiently as a gentleman. He's waiting lovingly because he cares for us. If God didn't care, he would have threw us out a long time ago. So again, he says, when her hour came to give birth, the minute this baby was out, the minute the blessing was out, there was joy. You can rejoice in the blessing. And he says, And let no one take this joy away from you. It's not theirs. It's not even ours. The joy is ours because God promised it. But the blessing is God's. It's ours to steward. It's ours to watch over. It's ours to love and nurture just like a baby. It's ours to nurture, but it's God's blessing. And because it's God's blessing, God will see us through. And God will start to remove the very things 
that we ask him to out of our lives that are hindering us. If we go down to 23, he says, And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, and I know this is talking about Jesus' return. He says, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. You haven't asked me anything. You haven't asked me to show you. You haven't asked me to give you discernment. You haven't asked me to give you wisdom. You haven't asked me to show you the way that the way would be pure and righteous and holy for you. But until you ask me, I can't do the very thing you're asking me for. Amen. So I want to encourage you guys that this is a season of your blessing, right? I talk about blessings all the time because we are blessed. We are highly blessed, highly favored. But this thing, this walk, this faith of ours is to God. And it's God's role as God and his heart as God and as sovereign to bless us when he wants to. Because he knows we're ready. He's not going to give you something prematurely. If that baby comes out too soon, that's considered a premature baby. That baby got to go into NICU. It has to go under all kinds of tests and medication. If not, hope not. But when a baby is premature, it's now in position to be sick. It's in position to be, it's vital that the baby's protected and sound and safe from the outside world of immunity, of, of defective immunities, of sickness, of disease, of ravenous wolves so when god is getting ready to bless you that thing is so sacred it's so special it's our job to steward it well so maybe it's not your job to share it's exciting when god is blessing it's exciting when god is moving us forward but we have to be wise right he says wise like a serpent be mindful that we are being led by the holy spirit because when we're led it's honorable it's pure it's true it's righteous it's holy it's good. Amen. So I, I encourage you to move in silence in this season as you are led. Share as you are led. But know that if people are not like rejoicing and celebrating in this season, that only means that God is moving you forward and not everybody's going with you. God has to shift things around. And no matter what, he's working in people's lives. No matter what. You give them grace, give them love, pray for them, but know God's moving you forward and be okay with that. Don't forfeit your blessing due to what other people have to say. God didn't call everybody. He called you, right? He called you for that thing, that assignment. So I pray you're blessed, highly favored. I love you guys. Share this video with people that need to hear this word. Uh, repost it if you have to. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon. God bless you.